Number 22. A 560 gram squirrel with a surface area of 930 squared centimeters falls from a 5 meter tree to the ground. Estimate its terminal velocity and use the drag coefficient for a horizontal skydiver. All right, so let's just draw um, a little free body diagram here. Now the squirrel, right, has a certain weight and the weight is the force, right, that essentially gravity is pulling down on the squirrel. All right, so remember that weight is equal to mass times gravity, but remember the mass here has to be in terms of kilograms. So what do they give us? Lovely, they gave it to us in grams. So we simply just have to do the conversion, okay? You can take this and simply divide it by 1,000 or just move the decimal point three places to the left. All right, so it'd be 0 0.560 kilograms. So let me just plug that in. So it's 0 0.560 kilograms multiplied by uh, gravity. Right, the acceleration due to gravity. So when we do that calculation, it becomes 0.56 times 9.8. So we get a value of 500, no 500, what the, five, sorry. <laughs> Seeing if you're paying attention, that's all. 5.49, 5.49 Newtons, okay? Now, since we are calculating the terminal velocity, remember, uh, here, here's the word, terminal velocity, right? Remember though, when, when a body reaches terminal velocity, it's not accelerating anymore, right? And if it's not accelerating anymore, remember, if we think about the formula, sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. If there is no more acceleration, what are the sum of the forces? Zero. What does that mean? That means that the forces balance. And if that's the case, there must be an opposing force here. Let me draw that a little straighter, pointing straight up, right? That is equal to this magnitude, but opposite in direction. So we'll say that this is the force of drag, okay? Now remember, they're equal but opposite, and therefore there would be no acceleration, and that would mean that we have reached terminal velocity, okay? So, all right. So now let's start um, calculating this terminal velocity. Remember, we use the force of drag formula. So let's write that down. So we got the force of drag equals one half, coefficient of drag multiplied by the density of the fluid the object is traveling in, multiplied by the surface area that is facing, right, the uh, motion, multiplied by the velocity squared. So since I'm plugging in this value for the force of drag, and that equals the weight, that means I'm solving for terminal velocity, okay? So this is 5.49, that equals now one half, the coefficient of drag, they said to use it for a horizontal skydiver, so look at the table. Here's the skydiver horizontal, it has a value of one. So let's plug that in. Now the density, we're talking about air. So remember that the density of air, I'll write it over here on the right-hand side, is 1.21 kilogram per cubic meter. All right, so that value probably will have to be memorized. Now multiply it by the surface area. Now remember, this surface area in this problem could be a little tricky. There's an assumption I have to make here, but this surface area is the surface area of the object that faces the motion. We're dealing with a squirrel. Okay, so the information that they tell us, it says with a surface area of 930 squared centimeters. Is that 930 the total surface area of the entire squirrel? Is this surface area, or, or is this surface area the surface area that's facing the motion? I don't know. Maybe you have better insight into it, but to me it sounds a little ambiguous. So I have to make an assumption. So my assumption here is that this is probably the total surface area, okay? So not the surface area that is facing the motion, meaning that the surface area that faces the motion should be less than, right? Pretend that you're falling and you're horizontal, you're facing the earth, right? Only the front part or the anterior part of your body will be facing the motion, right? The posterior part is opposing motion. So now, let's first just simply calculate this value in square meters, okay? Because we need meters at a minimum to get into, you know, to plug it into the equation. So let's simply do this 930 squared centimeters, okay? Remember we want meters, so centimeters goes on the bottom, meters on the top. Remember that there's 100 centimeters in a meter. Now notice, if I only put this conversion one time, if I only use it once, this centimeter will cancel with one of these two. So I'll cancel out that too. But if I do it again, right, same ratio, notice that this centimeter will now cancel the remaining. And what's meter times meter then? Oh, wonderful, that's square meter. So all I have to do here is take 930. So 930 divided by 100 divided by 100. 
and we get 0 0.093. So 0 0.093 and probably an extra zero there for sig figs. So this is the total surface area, I'm assuming. Now, let's make another assumption. Um, how much of that total surface area is facing the motion? Would you say half of it? Would you say, well, that would assume that it's like a pancake. And the squirrel's not a pancake. So maybe a quarter, right? I mean, it's really, okay, that'd be reasonable, but it's not a square. It's kind of in between, right? So in my opinion, this is totally, like I said, this is an assumption. I would probably take about a third of this value to be the value that actually faces the motion, okay? So just, I'm very clear about this. This is an assumption I am making here. Um, and the problem is I don't, you know, they don't tell me explicitly what this surface area represents. If it's the total or if it's the surface area that faces the motion, I'm assuming it is not. Um, and therefore I'm going to, again, make another assumption that a third of this, you know, multiply by one third, a third of this will be facing the motion, okay? So when I take 0 uh, 0.093, multiply it by one divided by three, we get a value of 0 0.0. 0.031, right, meters squared. So this is now the value I'm going to use in my calculations, okay? Zero point, um, what do we got? 0 0.0310, great. And then I just solved for this. Now let's solve for the um, terminal velocity, that's squared. So let's just do some math, right? Let's clean this up a little bit, 5.49 is equal to 0.5 times 1 times 1.21 times 0 0.031. So we get a value of 0 0.0188, uh, eight, right? If we consider sig figs and rounding times VT squared. Divide now the 0 0.0188 from both sides, 0 0.0188. So we get the terminal velocity squared being equal to, so 5.49 divided by 0 0.0188. 292, right? 292, okay? And then we have to then take, right, the square root of both sides, get rid of the square. So the terminal velocity here would be square root of 292. So about 17, right? So here we got about 17.1 or so. So 17.1 meters per second. When you take the square root of something, remember, you always get a positive and negative answer. I mean, the squirrel is traveling down towards the earth. So I, it should be negative, but... You know, in terms of terminal velocity, usually it's just framed in the positive uh, or the absolute value. So I'm just going to leave it like this. All right, so that would be the answer to the first part. Now, second part. What will be the velocity of a 56 kilogram person hitting the ground, assuming no drag contribution? Well, guess what, guys? This is assuming no air resistance. Blah, 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 blah. No air resistance, right? So I don't really care what the weight is. All right? It has no influence. It's just extra information. So remember, uh, this person is going to drop five meters. So this distance was five meters. What's their initial velocity? Well, zero, right? They're gonna start at zero. By the way, this is all in the y direction. What's the final velocity in the y? Well, we don't know. What is the acceleration in the y direction here? Negative 9.80, right, meters per second squared. And another thing I don't know is the time, right? Time is also a question. Remember that this displacement is going to be negative, right? If I consider the change in y, anytime you start high and end low, it's negative. So now we've got to think of a, um, uh, a formula, right, that relates these variables. I want to find the final velocity in the y. I know the displacement. I know the initial, and I know acceleration. So think back real hard to the prior chapter, or I should say prior two chapters. We have the final velocity in the y direction squared equaling the initial, squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by that displacement. So now let's just plug in some stuff, right? This is squared. Okay, the initial we said was zero, so that just cancels. The acceleration was negative 9.80, and the change in displacement was negative five. All right, so now, well, oops. Well, one more time. There we go. So let's just now calculate this simply, okay? So we get two times negative 9.8 times five, and we get 98, 98, square root both sides. And now what we're gonna get, I'm gonna put my answer all the way over here on the bottom left. So we get the final velocity in that y direction being equal to square root of 98, so 
9.90 meters per second. Okay, and again, remember it would be plus or minus. Again, he's falling, so it's negative, but if you left it out of the answer, I'm sure it's not a big deal. Okay, so anyway, guys, hopefully this helped. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.